Okay, today I'm going to be looking at uh, more atmospheric painting and I'm just going to be playing around with the analogous colours of yellow, orange and red. So to start with, I'm going to tape up as I do uh, using a washi tape. And this is just basically to give you a nice border. Now sometimes, depending on where you buy it, it can run underneath. We'll wait and see if this one's worked. Okay. So essentially this is a low tack tape. So it doesn't tear the paper. I'm using 300, 300 GSM cold press, which is a bit smoother, just to see how it goes. If you want, um, you can use 300 GSM warm press as well and you get different textural effects on the paper. And if you're wanting to go back in with your brush and create sort of dry blending techniques, that's probably a good one to use. Okay, so just putting in some water. And I've had some brushes here, some extra ones that I have used before. So it's a, uh, a number one hake brush these are great for doing washes with and you can get them in different sizes this is one of the smaller sizes there's a um, art spectrum series 60 red sable it's got a lovely domed brush quite thick to apply the paint and these are from china they're a series called albino which has a synthetic hair um, they're good too to apply colour, so it's just different things. These are the um, squirrel mops that you can see. So these are great to lift up colour and drop it in, specifically for creating atmospheric um, landscapes. So there's a whole lot of different ones. There's a couple of twos. There's uh, a bigger one here, which doesn't have a number and then neither does this one over here, but it's got a really lovely, as you can see, a nice tip. And these are rigger brushes, and the rigger brushes is what I've talked about before. They're great for if you're doing um, fine stems and branches on a tree because you don't have a lot of control because the bristle is quite long. You can get them even longer than that, and it makes it a, li a little bit more authentic. It's The branches aren't contrived. So they look fantastic. So they're the types of brushes that I'm looking at experimenting with today. The colours I'll be looking at is Art Spectrum Lemon Yellow, Art Spectrum uh, Yellow, and a little bit of Burnt Sienna, and some Warm Spectrum Red to see what happens with the landscape that I'm going to be creating. This is from my imagination. As I've said many times before, sometimes things work, sometimes they don't work, and it doesn't really matter. So to start with, I might um, see if I can use a hake brush first and paint some water in for a wash. Now I might not necessarily paint every section of it right down. I might leave some areas unpainted and then I'm going to drop in so I use these brushes here for the um, application of the washes and then I may use one of these mop brushes I'm going to give it a go it's been a while since I've used one okay and I'm just going to drop some color in I've already pre-mixed some of my colors so I just put them in like so, quite liberally. I like the fact that it's running. Okay, and wash it out. Then I might add a little bit of red. Okay, it's actually not a very dark red. intensified a bit um, okay I just 
soften it through a little bit in here. And sometimes you don't want it to pull, which is what's happening in here, but sometimes it actually looks quite good in the pooling method of it all. Okay, so just going to pick up some of the extra. It's pulled a little bit more than what I wanted. Sometimes it's a matter of getting the right consistency. So I have a little bit of red here as well, and I'm going to use a maybe a sable brush this time just to add a little bit of red. It's not the art spectrum. I've run out of colour, so I only have limited colours to work with. So I'm looking at Elizarian's Crimson. It's an acrylic atelier, but I'm hoping this is a bit of an experiment that once I drop it in, it should be fine. It will spread if I liquefy it enough. So I just put a little bit up the top here and maybe down the bottom over here. It's not liquefied. So I may need to quickly add a little bit more red water and let that happen. Let that run in, in here as well. Okay, and then uh, go back into some of these areas. You want to leave some of it white, but not a lot. Okay, so that's happening. It's quite a nice colour. And it's pulling a little bit. It's pulling because the paper is buckling, but that's okay. You can just get a dry brush. I've just got one of the household brushes. You may want to put a little bit more intensity of the red in here. Okay. And I've had, a, I've got a few what they call cauliflowers happening, but you can, I don't mind them. A lot of people don't like them. It's a matter of getting them quite right. Okay, so I'll have a little bit of yellow, which is this one here. And go back to my um, mop brush. It's a really, it, it, it really feels and looks like a mop. It's so soft. Okay, maybe drop in some yellow as well before it starts to dry in areas, a little bit of water. It's a matter of getting the right consistency. Sometimes I add a little bit too much water and other times not enough. Maybe put some yellow in here as well down the bottom, like so. And I might kind of like a little bit more red in here. So I'll see if I can intensify it, allow it to do its thing. just to, to bring it out like so, okay. If you don't want the cauliflowers, a lot of people don't like them. The cauliflowers are those tin little rough edges that a lot of watercolour artists will say that um, it's not that great to have them. I think that they add a little bit of texture. I quite like them, so. And you know, there's no right or wrong here. This is just sort of experimental, just have fun with it. Okay, so I might decide to put a little bit more red in here. Maybe even mix it up with the warm red that I have, which is the, um, yeah, kind of nice color. Again, go back to the mop, pick up some of the colour. See the difference between this red here and that one. Trying to make it a bit more like the crimson, just to add a little bit more colour in here before it dries up. What you can do is you can spritz it a little bit. Ooh. Oh dear, accidents happen. And spritz it a little bit. That actually doesn't look too bad. All right. All right, I'm just 
going to absorb some of that extra water that's spilt on there. Okay. Right, now I'm going to go back into it. A little bit more red in here. It's not moving that much, but that's okay. Maybe in here as well. And then I'm going to go and do the yellow. Um, you can lift it. So if I lifted it up, see what happens. It, it might move around a little bit more. So just by doing that, letting it run across. I kind of like doing that a lot of the time, um, just to see what happens. Allowing that water to run across and even a little bit, maybe a little bit of yellow in here with a little bit of water to allow it to just to drip down. Um, as you can see, it looks probably a lot better than what it was before by, by lifting it and allowing it to run. Okay, so it look too bad. I've got a bit of an accident here. Okay. Right. Now you can see here where, the, where there's been too much water, you will find that there's um, the paper starting to come off. So I may need to use a slightly different paper next time. See that. Um, just absorbing some of it. You can always wait for it to dry and then go back into it if you want to. I'm going to add just a little bit of burnt um, sienna, just just to make it a bit darker in areas and a little bit of ivory black. I mean, there's lots of colors that you can buy um, and just play around with them all the time and have fun with them. So I'm just going to drop, just trying to find the right brush. I don't want to use a, a mop brush for this one because I want to, I want to drop specific darkness in certain areas so i'll mix it up a little bit as you can see here water it down you can make little pots of color which is a good recommendation like this if you're doing a lot of little paintings and um, drop them in so i'm going to drop one in in here and i like it to be a little bit darker maybe a few lines here before it actually dries up and uh maybe just in here Allow that to, so you can lift it up, a little bit more black in it. Quite solid colour. I'm not a big fan of black, so I'm always sort of almost very cautious of using it. But uh, it can create, you know, some fantastic contrasts. Um, so I'm allowing that to to run again. So the, wrap, the black will run down. I don't have a lot of colour on my brush. It looks like I do, but I really don't. Um, and then in here, I actually want that area quite solid, so I'll go back over it. So put it down flat, maybe apply it quite solidly. Into here. Here, so I'll just try and blend it out. And I want a little bit of darkness just in here, a bit more. You might decide to scrunch up and um, lift some color, lift for texture 
in here. Just I'm not dabbing this very um, hard. Just it's just touching the surface just to create a bit of interesting texture happening down here. Um, I'm trying to make a distinguish between the landscape and the actual sky. Um, okay, so for those of you who don't like cauliflowers, I'll pop them out here. Okay. You can lift it pretty quickly if you work fast, but sometimes if it dries, it's too late to lift the cauliflower out of the, um, the sky. Sometimes a cauliflower makes an interesting sort of effect. It almost looks like a bit of a cloud, depending. So this is basically trial and error, really. And then you might decide to get a fan brush. I've got a few of these ones. You can get different sizes. You might have both the same. And as it starts to dry, you might want to flick a few um, like reeds through. Don't be precious with it. Probably easier to do this as it dries. Um, just experimenting to see what happens if I don't wait for it to dry. Okay. Just push it up here. Great brush to have, fantastic. It does some wonderful things technique wise. So I'm just going to mix it up with a little bit more water. So pick it up. You want it to be dry. You don't want the brush to be wet because you want to be able to streak it and flick it. Try not to go in all, you know, one direction, go in all sorts of directions. Sometimes I close my eyes just to, so I have less control of where it's going and what it's happening. So at the moment it's getting a little bit wet, so it's it's, it's thickening up the bristles. I do have another one here. I give that a go. Yeah, that works a bit better. It's all about mark making, really, and just having fun with your mark making. Um, if you're able to get the right colours, I'd go into an art shop and, and buy the right colours. There's lots of uh, experimentation. Sort of the colours that I use are mainly your... I went through a series of just using French ultramarine blue, Payne's grey, um, indigo blue phalo blue, lots of blues, but just starting to explore a little bit with the warmer tones is quite nice. So I just want that to be really quite dark. So it's better if it's a little bit dry to get that darkness in, just to add a bit more contrast, that's all. Yeah, just in here. Feathering it out. And this is doing more like a bright dry brush technique because it's already started to dry down. With the dry brush techniques, you'll see down here the texture of the paper. And it looks actually quite good because it looks pretty rugged. You haven't got that smooth finish. Um, a little bit of so you might decide that you may want to just a tiny, tiny line just to make it more def 
find. Pick up a bit of pigment. You don't want to draw a specific black line. And as I said, the least contrived it is, the better it is. Um, so a bit of colour in here happening. So I might just add a little bit of um, water in here. And then maybe even a touch of your eye. Yep, that looks good. Intensified a little bit more. adds a really good contrast to the area. Now I don't want it to pull so I might use some of this tissue. You can use scratched up paper as well if you want to have different textures just play around with it. Um, so I might decide okay um, if you want to dry up your brush you can even maybe sweep some wreaths along here. Sometimes I like to cut the brushes because then it's sort of, you don't have evenness, which is what I don't want. You can use the end, scrape it through. Probably fussed over it a bit too much actually, should have just left it the way it was. Okay, and that's an atmospheric painting for today. Um, just have fun with it. If you put it on in a little frame, you can take sections of it. I've shown in past little videos that I've done, I've shown you how to do that. You can do something along those lines, you can move it around, or you can just do that and think, well, I quite like that, or I just like that. Sometimes it's nice just to show the sky. Um, you know with very little in the foreground but um, it can be quite interesting and you can work back into it if you wish if you wish but that's a really quick painting that can be done in no time and um, build up a little portfolio of little experiments and see how you go with it a lot of the times some of the things I think don't work I end up um, putting them in little local exhibitions and people love them so I guess the beauty is in the eye of the beholder not necessarily what you may think so just have some fun